Everyone knows about Mural Fest. You got your murals going up, your stuff on sale, can butcher in hand, bring your friend or your grandma, bring a baby. It's fun for the whole family. And enjoy getting smashed on the official beer of the festival, Belgian Moon. It's actually great. But what's this? Away from the plateau, down the hill, past the hookers and the crackheads, breathe deep the fumes of weed and paint. It's under pressure. The first festival in Montreal to put paint on a wall before that was considered a proper thing to do at all. Both these festivals are running scaled down versions in 2020, which provides an interesting glimpse into the urban art festival phenomenon today, alongside the streety graffiti festival of the distant, distant 1990s. So where did these festivals get their start? Free dating signature graffiti or, or style writing graffiti or wild style, whatever you want to call it. You had an enormous amount of political graffiti because of the referendums and all that. What we would call vandalism or graffiti or marking on a wall and being a nuisance and causing millions of dollars of damage back then would have been politically driven and it would have been specific to language issues between French and English. So my grandma grew up in Halifax and was never ever ever okay with any sort of graffiti. <gasps> Vandals! But unlike most places, the wild political ride of our city meant that many residents experienced it earlier than most. It's funny because I get into these debates, especially with an older generation, and I say to them, well, your generation marked up the city politically. You understood the message, it was justified, and you obviously positioned yourself on one, one side or the other of the argument. So when you were walking down the street, if you had a political ideology that supported what you saw on the wall, you didn't care if it was on someone's house, you didn't care if it was any illegal, you didn't care how much it cost to clean up. That message there supported your political position or mentality. I think that history primed the pumps for a wider understanding of why graffiti isn't just scribbles or vandalism around of these parts. So then we started to enter the modern era. The beginning of the 90s. Wild style or signature graffiti or style writing graffiti became a new trend because globally it started to take more and more space in the, you know, whether it was music videos, magazines, skateboard magazines, uh, on album cover artwork, all this stuff, clothing, brands. The political graffiti of the earlier era gave way to the international graffiti style that you see today. Fittingly, in 1996, the year after the final referendum on independence, Quebec had its first under pressure festival. Scribble Jam was going on, uh, Write for Gold. Uh, in Australia, there were events going on. We were working with the guys from Stealth Magazine in Australia. They were doing a graffiti festival called Urban Expressions, which was really funny because our mural company was called Urban Expressions. <laughs> There's only so many names around the world that you can use that. There's Seth. another Up Fest, there was another Up Magazine. There's been a whole bunch of things, but that's okay. I mean, we've been around for 25 years, so it's kind of, it's funny. It is what it is. With 25 consecutive years behind it, the festival has outlasted most of its peers to become one of the earliest and oldest graffiti festivals in the world. Over the years, it has given a lot of people in town a platform. Even in 2020, the festival continued without much advertising at all. There's no reason to. There's people walking yeah. on the street. They see it, they discover it. And, and that's kind of the purest aspect to graffiti, right? Is when I would paint in an abandoned building or when we painted somewhere that nobody knew about under a highway, Whoever was lucky enough to stumble across this or discover it had to make that kind of investment. They, then they were part of a small group of people who may be aware of this thing. So this year we're down to the bare essentials under pressure, just people painting walls. The fact that the festival can handle all the economic pressure and still have full coverage of all these walls, I think tells you something about the festival and its resilient structure. Under pressure can definitely handle pressure. That's the power of community. That's, that's the foundation that this is built on. That's not built on the foundation of community. It's built on economics and the economy changes. This year is a great example. So they couldn't do what they did. Under pressure still doing what under pressure does. Under pressure is just doing it the way under pressure does it. So Mural Fest is the more commercialized late arrival mural festival. Naturally, there is a bit of a friendly rivalry there. Mural Fest offers a different product, which is great. I'm not gonna take my aunt to a metal show, although um, <laughs> I'm feeling sterling might. Long live metal mosh pits and mayhem. Mural got underway in 2013. The key difference? $400,000 in funding. Partnerships with the Grand Prix, Eventco, and the largest merchants association of Montreal on Saint Laurent Street. They're smart enough to seize the opportunity to exploit what's their 
for money. Mural Fest is part of a second wave of festivals post exit through the gift shop that capitalized on the groundwork laid in the 1990s. And Mural Fest, just like Under Pressure, was actually pretty early getting established in its wave of festivals. Montreal's business is creativity and business is good. To me, nothing says something has arrived like people disagreeing over the definition of words. It's always fun to see how someone reacts when you say street art. <laughs> see, street art is a whole other thing too. I, I have my issues with the word street art too. You only make that mistake once. With these festivals and stop references, you know, McDonald's, Ramados, and a food truck are all food, which at least we can all agree on now. Not the case in the 90s. Still, I don't really know what to call all this shit now without someone disagreeing with me. It's like you say urban art, but then it's like, well, cities always created most of the art. <sighs> Whatever. I will be, yeah, they'll, they're gonna rip me a new asshole. So now we have two very different festivals. Under Pressure represents both the origin of graffiti and the origin of many of our up-and-coming artists in town. And Mural Fest, on the other hand, represents the origin of all these new fans and supporters of what has become a major point of pride for the city. The result of this reactor, created by organizers and artists, has been a pretty clearly great thing for the city. Montreal is definitely considered a, a, a hub of creativity for international artists and local artists. And I think that's why people come from all around the world to, to visit or live here or spend a, a few months here. Montreal is a melting pot for North America. So Mural Fest is a polished professional product that would get even the curmudgeonly old grandpa to admit, oh, okay, yeah, I see what this is. I like this. It's personally my favorite week to invite someone from out of town to come and stay. You know, you hit up the Mural Fest, check out the murals and the architecture, finish the day with a beer in the park. Perfect Montreal. And if you like what you've seen at Mural Fest over the years, why not consider heading down the hill to Under Pressure? It offers a more informal, low-key experience where you can see Montreal graffiti artists doing their thing. From what I can tell, it's actually the second longest running graffiti event in the world and the longest running festival, which is amazing. So that's the two big graffiti festivals in town compared. But as we all know, most graffiti in Montreal doesn't end up on a approved wall for a festival. So next time when I come back, we'll be looking at that stuff and some of the creative ways that the city tries to handle it. Hi, Paige here. You might know me from the video. I um, hope you liked it. I uh, got a couple more graffiti videos coming up. So I'm recording this while the person who's helping me with the camera uh, has headed off because something that Sterling said was very relatable. It's easy for me to be like the face of something and to be pushy, but then a lot of the time, a, a lot of the attention comes back to me and people think that it's me alone doing things and it wasn't. You know, if, if there's any regrets that I have in failures, it would be managing those, those personal relationships. I was young, I was 20 years old or 22 years old when I started this festival. I didn't know any better. I often feel like I'm the tip of an iceberg and a sea of kindness and generosity. Whether it's friends and family who give me a ton of emotional support and a lot of time, um, or people who leave nice comments or um, are on Patreon, without all those people, um, this wouldn't happen. So thank you.